Zero to Gi. Learning better is better. Welcome geeks and welcome back to our third chapter in my book that I wrote, Ben Falla. Uh, the name of the book is HTML5 Graphing and Data Visualization Cookbook. Whew, that was a big word and I actually said it without making mistakes. I'm very proud of myself. No dog barking, no phone ringing. We're in a good shape. Let's continue then. All right, so this whole point of this session, if it's the first time you've seen, you're seeing this, is once a week on Wednesdays, we release a new video based on a book. This time it's my book. And we explore the chapter to understand what is it about to understand what it is. It's probably ideal to watch it before you read the chapter, maybe after as well. And we'll explore basically what are our goals in your training and what you'll learn when you're reading that chapter. And follow up after that, maybe an exercise or an idea what you could do to take it to the next level or where could you find more material, kind of like this extra curriculum for the book. So without further ado, let's get started. We'll talk more about those stuff later on because we want to jump right in. So let's let's break down and kind of see the different layers of information that are inside of the book and this time around I really want to run through them quickly because I, I just want to explain what is the title really about what are these type of graphs and literally we're, we're talking about graphs that are sitting inside of this XY coordinate and really in this chapter which is jam-packed with a lot of different types of graphs the graphs are basically just graphs that are um, very linear so mainly if there's only one point of information, sometimes there'll be two and maybe even three and even four towards the end of the chapter. And we'll see how we visualize them in a more in a linear linear way on top on top of a graph. And what I mean by that is really the topics and the things that we're going to be covering in the chapter, where we deliberately focus one point of information at a time, starting from building a bar chart or a line chart, going through to spreading data on a on a scatter chart which is very similar to a bar chart only now it has two points of information so we start with one point of information we move on to two points of information then we build line charts which are kind of back to one point of information but we put more than one line chart inside of our chart so we're going back to one point of entry which is or it's actually two points of entry right yeah yeah two points of entry right because we have our x and we have our y same as for the bar in many ways but the bar is much more simple because we don't actually have a quantification on uh, on the scale. Well, as we progress with our sc scatter chart, it's the first time where we have a chart where our information is not linear. Well, with the bar chart, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six in a very linear fashion. With the scatter chart and so with the line chart, we have got, well, the scatter chart even more so, we have a dot that could be anywhere because it has two points of information. While the line chart has a linear path, although it has two lines of information, they're more structured. And then we continue on with creating the flying brick chart, which we'll explore and see what that is. We're going to draw with text. No, we're not going to draw with text, which is a mistake. Well, let's not. Let's just move on. And we're going to build a candlestick chart. We're definitely not going to draw with text. But let's see what we're actually going to do. There's a little typo there, but there's no point in starting off a video that went so well because I actually said the name of the book without mistake. So forgive me, please. All right. Good. I'm happy you forgive me. If you didn't, then just shut that video and go away. Walk away. Shut the door. Never come back. Good. All right. So back into our uh, browser. Again, if you're looking for our book, our HTML5 graphics and data visualization cookbook, you will find inside of our book sections at zero to geek.com, or you could pause the video and type a lot of copy to get there, which probably would be easier to go to zero to geek.com, go to the book section, find the book, get the book. Find the source files on the bottom or at any other place when the design gets updated, which it will because this page is starting to get a bit crazy. All right, so let's see what you're going to be building and we're going to run through it really quickly. So we're going to see the first thing we're going to see is how to create a bar chart. And then we're going to take that bar chart and make it a little bit smarter. If you notice in the beginning, we have kind of like this linear fashion. And here and now we kind of de decide what we want to output. So it's a little bit smarter. We then we will also scatter, which you'll see already in the book itself. Um, you can see the uh, the line chart. You can see a line chart a little bit smarter where we fill up the line chart. Uh, we also will see the waterfall chart and how to create it and what it actually is is all written down in the book and a few variations of it to improve it and make it better, make it more dynamic. It's stuff that are not as visual but are very stimulating when you read them, I believe. And we will also see how you build the stock chart and even how to build the stock chart when it's not with color. 
candlestick chart, I think this one is called, and this one, I don't remember what it's called, but it's one of those stock charts that are very common, which a lot of people want to know how to make because they need to make them because they work in some sort of financial company. All right, so that's a lot of stuff, and we're actually going to cover all that stuff in one chapter. It's a very, very jam-packed chapter, which really is going to put our feet into the idea of data visualization. We're going to see how to work with data points that change. If in our last chart, which is the four chart, uh, a chart that has four points of entry, which is low, high, um, opening and closing, that's four points of information, plus five, the actual date itself that's progressive or the time that passes in the day. So we actually have five points of information. So we're basically going from one point of information to two points of information all the way to five points of information by the end of the chapter. And that's about it. Now, what would you want to do for homework? It's very hard to ask you to do some homework on something like this, although it'll be hard to ask you to find a chart and just start from scratch. I really recommend that you go through all the different charts and really understand them. One of the things that you could do is go to one of the charts, such as maybe going back in the tool, maybe such as the line chart, and find a way to integrate both the line and the fill chart together in one chart. Or try to find a new way to visualize the information in a different, very cool way. You don't even have to find it in a catalog. Just try to find a creative or a more creative way to output the information. By the way, everything we're creating is drawn dynamically. It's done with the canvas. And we're not using any images. Everything is done by scratch via code automatically in JavaScript. All right. So that's about it. So that is your task, although it's not a very specific task. You know now what your goals are in the chapter. And thanks again for watching. And we will see you again in chapter three. If you're looking for the subscribe button, you'll find it on the top left corner. Zero to be. Learning better is better.